Hey, what's happening? It's Jack here. Let's take a look at what's in the news. The Great Aussie Coin Hunt has just begun. What's that I hear you ask? Well, I'm not entirely sure, so let's find out. What's more Aussie than a meat pie? Great pie, Mum. Perhaps Vegemite? Vegemite's as bright as bright can be. What about a traditional Aussie greeting? G'day, g'day, and how you go? Well, now all of these Aussie icons are getting their own coin. The Royal Australian Mint has teamed up with Australia Post to release an alphabet of Aussie icons. 26 new $1 coins will feature things from A to Z. From Ice Vovos, Cricket and Quokkas to lesser known icons like Xantippe, Australia's only town beginning with X. It's got a population of 20 and their most notable building is a large water tank. Move over, Sydney Opera House. The coins are collectible and you only get them in your change, but they're also legal tender. That means you can spend them at other stores. Although, if I get one, I'm probably just gonna keep it for myself. Big events are being held in China to celebrate the government's 70th birthday. The People's Republic of China was founded on October 1st, 1949. Big concerts and parades have been held and Chinese leaders made speeches about how the country has changed in 70 years. Meanwhile, the anniversary has brought on more protests in Hong Kong as people there speak out against China's influence. Lifesavers in Queensland have come up with a clever way to get people to stay between the flags. Free Wi-Fi. It's called Li-Fi and people can only connect if they stay in patrolled areas. Before they go online, they're shown a bunch of warning messages. And while they're browsing, they'll get a live feed of any warnings or updates on the water. Swimmers reckon it's kind of cool. I would always go in between the flags if there was Wi-Fi, so I don't have to use my data. I use my phone at the beach to go on like Snapchat and like YouTube and stuff just when I'm bored. A new study reckons social media is having a big impact on the way young boys view themselves. And experts say it's really affecting their body image. The thing about social media is, most of the time, people only post the stuff they want others to see. You know, happy smiling pictures and fun holidays. But studies have found that a lot of people, particularly young people, can't help but compare themselves to that, even if it might not be real life. A new book's just been released that looked at how that sort of thing affects young boys. It's based on a longitudinal study that I did with uh, boys from the age of five uh, through to around the age of 12 to 13 years of age. Professor Drummond says many of them wanted a six-pack and abs, and he reckons that could be because they see a lot of that online. It's just the fact that that, that images are now available for young males to see. They're everywhere. He says it's important to remember that what you see in a post isn't necessarily the full story and understand that everyone is different and that's OK. There's a, there's a range of boys out there doing a whole range of different things, whether it be dance, whether it be tennis, whether it be, whether it be football or cricket or rugby or whatever. We need to embrace difference. Now it's time to check out some stories of humans and animals learning to adapt. What's the best way to adapt to life on the International Space Station? Living in a European cave, of course. These six astronauts have spent a week down here learning to work as a team and getting used to dark and isolated conditions. So this was in order to improve their abilities of being better astronauts or cosmonauts once they go to space. Have you ever wondered what an octopus looks like when it's sleeping? No? Maybe you should because it's pretty cool. Marine biologists in the US noticed when this one was sleeping, she was changing colour, which got them thinking, do octopuses dream? So here she's asleep, she sees a crab and her colour starts to change a little bit. Hmm, I wonder what dreaming about a crab means. Maybe she was just hungry. And citizens of a town in Cuba are having to adapt to a new resident, giant African snails. The slimy pests have invaded the neighbourhood, and authorities say it's a national crisis. It might sound a little dramatic, but the snails can carry some really nasty diseases and do a lot of damage to crops. Authorities are now working to destroy them, but luckily they can't run away very fast. 
Well, that's all the news we've got for you. But before you slide away like a snail, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can check out all the cool content we've got coming.